Hey everybody, Brandon Boyd with The Brandon Boyd Show. Thank you so much for watching, and this is going to be a very special episode because after a night at Epcot watching the fireworks, my family and I embarked onto the newest cruise ship from Disney, the Disney Wish. We won this as part of a sweepstakes, the Year of Wishes sweepstakes from Disney, and we were able to get a preview cruise that actually took place before the public maiden voyage. So this is a preview cruise. The cruise ship itself was just a little over half full at just over 2,200 people. And of course, when you go on board, they ask how you want to be introduced. My family and I embarked. Disney Wish, please welcome aboard the Boyd family. Now just to be fair, this is going to be a very long but very detailed video, so make sure you check the description and look at the timestamps included in that because that will take you to exactly where you want to go if you want to find any particular topic on this ship because we are going to cover the whole dang thing, all right? So before we get started, don't forget to be awesome. Give me a big thumbs up on this video if you do find it helpful, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notifications for alerts because you know how we do things. We talk about points, miles, travel, money, finance, and everything in between and show you how to travel the world for little or no money and still have a great time. It should be noted that this review is going to cover both the good and the bad with the ship, so we're not going to leave anything out. We're going to give you our honest opinion because let's face it, these cruises are expensive. Now in the main lobby, it's absolutely beautiful. You've got Cinderella, you've got the Cheshire Cat, and of course, the glass slipper. Also on this ship, I mentioned it was a preview cruise, so you'll see a lot of media on board. There were a lot of cameras, a lot of people vlogging, getting set up, stuff like that. And again, this is a new cruise ship, so it did have a few shortcomings that I think will be addressed at the end of the day. Just some minor repairs and things that maybe weren't up to snuff, like some of the finishes around the edges. We saw some edges of the carpeting as well, and just a couple of unfinished surfaces here and there. But again, I think as time goes on, they're going to be able to work these out. So I'm willing to overlook these for the time being. Overall, though, you'll notice the artwork and the color schemes and the theming are very nice throughout the ship, and we're gonna give you a good combination, again, of the good and bad with the ship. Now let's start off with a stateroom tour. This is stateroom 6550. Well, hello. Welcome to the Disney Wish. What wish may I grant for you? Kayla is so funny. She gets so into this. She even had her magic wand out. That's so funny. Just to give you an idea on the location of this room, this was located right near a set of elevators. Now, in this cruise ship, as opposed to other Disney cruise ships, there were only two sets of elevators located in the aft and the forward. Now, on other ships we've been on, you were able to also have a set of elevators in the midship as well. So I found that to be a little bit of an issue just because you had to walk a little bit further in order to get to the set of elevators, but that's just a minor nuisance. You do have some closet space, some robes, and then in the other closet, you've got our ladder here. Now that's gonna be part of our bunk bed setup, and we'll show you exactly where that area is here in just a second. There are two different bathrooms, and this is very, very helpful. There was me, Kayla, and then our boys, Samuel and Benjamin. And trust me, when you got four people in a small stateroom and everybody's trying to get ready, it definitely helps to have separate bathrooms. Now, the second bathroom does include the shower. And when you look into the shower at some of the products that are available, you'll see the big bottles there, and we'll get a close-up of those in just a second. But there is a glass shower door and a sink as well. You do get shampoo, conditioner, and body wash, and these were in tamper-proof bottles, uh, so that's helpful. There's also a makeup cloth, I think. I'll be honest with you, I don't know much about the makeup cloths, but there is one in there, and there's body lotion as well. Now let's pull out and go out to the bedroom area. So let me just say that this bed was crazy comfortable, and there were outlets on both sides for charging, and we'll get an up-close shot of those in just a second, but this bed was so comfortable, we were actually wondering who made it, just so we could probably research that when we get back home. This is important. Pull out any, no. Stationary. Is it stationary? Oh, I guess it is. It is stationary. Hmm. Well, that's interesting that it's the TV is here, because I know in the other cruises with Disney, it was on the other on, side. It was over here, right? Mm -hmm. It was like stationed right here and you could like angle it. Yeah. Either way, so. Yeah, I found that to be a little bit of an issue just because again, the only people that can watch TV are gonna be the folks laying in the bed. And my kids typically on Disney cruises like to watch the cartoons and stuff to go to bed and they're over here in this bunk area. And the couch turns into a small bed and then the top half of the bunk folds down. So they're not going to be able to watch TV at night, so your kids are going to be relegated to just playing on electronics or just going to bed, which is unfortunate because, again, my kids loved to have the opportunity to watch the cartoons on board. It helped them go to sleep. 
On each side, like I mentioned, there are USB ports for charging and also just regular plug-in outlets. So there's USB-C, two type A ports, and then you've also got a reading light on each side. Very convenient, so everybody has their own individual controls. There was a small scratch. Actually, that's a pretty big scratch on the uh, desk here. Unfortunate because this is a new cruise ship, but apparently it was already scratched. Trust me, we didn't do that. If you're looking for the hair dryer, it's not in the bathroom. The bathroom space comes at a premium, so you can't fit everything in there. So if you're looking for the hair dryer, it is in the drawer there. The other drawers just provide additional storage space, except for the big one here at the bottom, and that is gonna be your refrigerator. Now, are you gonna be able to store a ton of drinks in here? No, not really, but if you have a couple of leftovers from the evening, you can certainly store it in there. But again, don't expect to hold a 12 pack of soda or something like that in there, it's just not gonna happen. And then my wife's favorite gift of the whole trip, the Disney Cruise Line pin. She loves these, she thinks they're the best. We did have a veranda. This is not an extended veranda, just a regular veranda room. My kids really enjoyed this because one of the life rafts is located right off the side there. So they were saying basically in a Titanic situation, they would just jump overboard into that and get lowered down. So they were very happy to see that and they thought it was cool to look at it while they were out there. Now this veranda is covered and there's two seats and a small table. We don't really spend that much time on the verandas, to be honest with you. Regardless of what cruise ship we're on, we're usually doing things on board, so we don't spend much time out there, but it is nice to have. This particular stateroom is themed in Cinderella. Some of the other floors are themed in Frozen. Again, theming, artwork was superb all over the ship. Each night when we returned back from dinner, our stateroom host, as part of our turndown service, would make really cool towel animals or bedding animals, stuff like that. Our kids always look forward to that. And then one evening they came and even did some cable management for us by putting some of these black Velcro straps to keep our cords from dangling around everywhere. Again, just a nice little touch from Disney and I would say customer service and service overall, a big thumbs up from Disney, and that's why you pay a little bit more to get on these cruise ships. Now let's talk about food. This is deck 11. All of the food that I'm gonna mention here is gonna be covered as part of the cost of the cruise, and we're gonna cover everything. I'm gonna show you everything that's on here, and then we'll do a separate area where we talk about extras that aren't covered. Now this is the barbecue area. I really like the pulled pork, it was very good. The brisket, a little bit dry to be honest with you, but hopefully they work that out. The sauce station is much appreciated, especially with those metal cups. Makes it very easy to try a variety of different sauces. As you keep walking around here on the left-hand side, you'll see Goofy's Grill. And I will say, these are really good burgers for setting by the pool. There's certain burgers that just work really well for setting by a pool. And whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but these work out really well. They're not overly filling, but they definitely get your salt fix in. Moving right along, we've got Minnie's Ice Cream. As opposed to other Disney cruise ships, this one is not a self-serve ice cream station, which I greatly appreciate because those self-serve ice cream stations leave ice cream drippings everywhere and it's a complete mess. So for this one, you'll just have to ask one of the friendly staff members to get your cone for you, and I actually greatly appreciate it. Another place that is not self-serve is this bar right next door. Now this is not included in the price of your food. So if you do want cocktails or something from the bar, you will have to pay extra for that, but that should be expected. And there's plenty of drink stations all around. This same drink station is replicated on the other side of these walls as well, regardless of what side you're walking around on. You'll notice another theme throughout this ship. There are a lot of places to get alcohol because what better way to experience that Disney magic than to have a buzz from some alcohol, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, we're moving on to Donald's Cantina. Here, the tacos were very good. The chicken tacos were great. Now, the beef tacos, just like the brisket, it was a little bit dry for my taste, but that's okay because they made up for it with the salsa bar and the hot sauce bar and that was very good, big thumbs up on that. Daisy's Pizza Pies, this was very good. However, they were having trouble keeping up with the demand for pepperoni pizza, and I worry about this whenever the ship gets completely full because they were having trouble meeting demand when it was just over half full. And just so I could say that I tried everything, this was my lunch on the first day. I grabbed some barbecue, burgers, fries, pizza, tacos. So I've tried all this stuff, okay? I'm not just telling you things for the sake of telling you that, hey, this looks good. I tried a lot of stuff on this ship to make sure that I was giving you the best information possible. Marceline Market was the place we went to quite a bit for lunch and then for breakfast as well. So there's a hand washing station when you go in and we're gonna do the full circle here, okay? First of all, you'll see the bar located there in the center. Just like I mentioned, there are a lot of bars on this cruise ship. It's almost hard to walk more than 10 feet without running into one. 
I'm just kidding, all right, not really. But let's walk around and see what all's here. First of all, you got your carving station, and you're gonna have potatoes, chicken, vegetables, and then some breads as well. You also have small charcuterie boards, and again, this is just the first station. These were pretty good. The charcuterie boards uh, were okay. Uh, my wife had one one day that she liked, and then another where it was just okay. And then you've got uh, more of an Asian flair at the next station. This was pretty good. I actually enjoyed this. I had this one day for lunch, and uh, the food was pretty good here. The beef, although it was a little bit dry, at the taco station and the brisket station, it was actually pretty good here. So they did a good job, rice, salmon, and again, more vegetables because we want to eat healthy. And one of the more popular places was the kids' counter. This counter is lower in height so children can walk up and get children's food, but to be honest with you, I may have walked up here and got some fries and mac and cheese and chicken tenders myself. Just don't tell anybody, okay? But there are some veggies there as well, some potatoes and then tomato soup, along with some celery and carrots. So there are some healthy options, whether your kids choose to use those or not. Well, we'll see how that goes. Speaking of healthier options, we have soup and salad at the next station. So if you want to, you can eat semi-healthy on a cruise ship. Now, are you gonna do that? I don't know because you have to walk by the cheeseburger and the ice cream stands quite a bit. So that's up to you. This is all about willpower here, but just so you know, there are healthy food options here. And again, more Asian inspired food. And then the dessert section. I'll give a big thumbs up to the small carrot cake pieces. Make sure you check those out and it's carrot cake. It's got carrots in it, I'm assuming. So that's semi-healthy. I don't know, just eat the carrot cake. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. And my kids really like these cookies. They had both oatmeal raisin and chocolate chip every day. And then my wife's favorite area in Marceline Market was the seafood area. She ate here at least twice that I can recall, and she raved about it both times. So if you really like seafood, make sure you stop at this seafood station. 1923 was our first restaurant experience, and this was really cool. First of all, you've got the staff, which are waving at the cameras. They loved it. They wanted to be on camera and they were very happy to serve us. And you'll see this throughout the video. The staff are just always smiling. They're always in a good mood. And it's also worth noting, if you're not familiar with Disney Cruise Lines, the staff that waits on you in this restaurant, they will follow you to the next restaurant and you'll have the same wait staff during your entire stay, which makes it very convenient because they'll have your drinks ready for you when you show up to the table as they get to know you. They'll get to know your family a little bit and you'll get to know them as well. It makes for a very good experience and brings some familiarity to the whole experience. Now in 1923, it was decorated with all kinds of drawings, very cool decor that you can stop and look at. And I've got some footage of the food as well. I was very impressed overall with 1923. I give it a thumbs up. Now I'd heard that there were some mixed reviews of this place, but I don't see it. I'm, I'm not sure where that comes from because everything that I had here was actually very good. And I would tell you, if it's something that I'm kind of iffy on or something that I didn't like, I would straight up tell you. But in my opinion, everything that we had in 1923 was very good and I highly recommend it. So you can get salads, appetizers, soups, entrees, you can get desserts. Over the course of three nights, eating all this food did add up for us just a little bit. We were starting to get full by the end of our cruise, but you're definitely well fed here and no good dinner is complete without dessert. We actually got a few different desserts just to try out, but hey, that's what we do here. The churros were very, very good. I was actually so full by the end of the dinner that for myself, I just got one scoop of vanilla ice cream with maybe an old fashioned there on the end that you can see that I have left over as well. Talk about a good dessert, it was a winner. One of the really cool things that I love is the staff is very interactive with the kids. So this paper airplane actually came from one of the staff members that was waiting on us. Our kids were getting a little fidgety waiting around, so he designed probably the coolest paper airplane I've ever seen, and also gave them puzzles to work on in hand while we were waiting for different courses to come out. So they were very engaging and made sure that not only the kids had fun, but that the parents could relax because they were you know, not trying to keep their kids from moving around everywhere. Made for a very great experience. That same wait staff followed us over for our Marvel dinner, and this was a lot of fun. The theming for this restaurant was fantastic, and you'll see as we go in, it has a very futuristic feel, and it just seems like a place, if you're a kid, what cooler place could you come to than something like this? When you walk in, it looks like you're walking into some kind of super space scientific lab with screens everywhere, the ceiling's lit up, 
and it's just a really cool atmosphere altogether. Now this is an interactive dinner where they play video at the table in between the courses. So in between the appetizer and then your entree, they'll play some video footage. And there's also this like energy booster thing that's in the middle of the table that you interact with as part of the videos in between. Again, keeping the kids engaged the whole time. And this was really important. Instead of me blabbing about it the whole time, how about we actually take a look and see how this thing works in action, okay? Are you ready? In three, two, one. Pretty sweet, right? Yeah, I mean, how cool is that? So you're sitting at the table and you're saving lives at the same time. If you're a kid, how could you beat that? The food here, just like 1923, was very good. I recommend the bao bun uh, that had pork belly in it. That was very good. I distinctly recall that. I really enjoyed it myself. And the kids, again, in between courses, we're going back to video footage again, and they have to save the world here in between courses or everything's gonna go haywire. Now overall, I did prefer the food at 1923 more, but the overall experience and the fun that my kids had, I would have to put this one above 1923 in that regard. So it depends on what you're looking for. Long story short, with Disney, you don't have any shortage of options when it comes to food or entertainment. And in this case, you can have them both. After my kids had successfully saved the world and also saved the lives of Ant-Man and Wasp, they showed up to show their gratitude. So not only is it at the table, on the screens, you've got the real life superheroes coming in to say thank you for a job well done. Entertainment, food, fun for the entire family. We absolutely loved it. And of course, we have to have the dessert shots because it's important to see what's for dessert to see what you can possibly cram in your mouth after all the food that you've already eaten. The desserts were really good. My son, Ben, really loved this sundae that was topped with a donut because who wouldn't love that? A donut topped sundae is something straight out of a dream. For night number three, we are moving to Arendelle and this is the Frozen themed dinner. There was a lot going on at this dinner and we are gonna cover it in depth because there's just so much going on. Just walking down the hallway, to get to the dinner service, you can see how much time and effort went into making this feel like a really unique experience. All the way down to the portholes here where you normally look out and you can see the ocean, you've got frosted glass with frozen decor in every porthole as you walk through here. So you'll see that. The only downside, of course, is that you can't see out into the ocean whenever you're walking through there because it is frosted, but hey, what are you gonna do? It's a small sacrifice to make. Look how long of a hallway this is, first of all. And this line did get fairly long, even though, again, the cruise ship is just over half full with guests. So I would imagine when it's completely full, it could get a little bit long, but that's okay. It's just more scenery and decor to look at. The lights that you see, it looks like they're flickering. Well, it's because they are flickering. This isn't just bad camera work. This is actually what they look like, and I'll show you a close-up of those in just a second. It's these small details from the details in the wood floor that you can see, to the portholes, to the wall color, the pictures, the flickering lights as you walk down. It is just really cool. If, again, if you're a big fan of Frozen or your kids are a fan of Frozen, they are gonna absolutely love it because no detail has been overlooked and it's a really cool experience just to walk to dinner. Now, this is important, they do give you hand sanitizing wipes as you walk into dinner and then a place to throw those away before you walk in. So everything should be somewhat clean or as clean as you can make it. And here are some more of the statues. You're gonna see Anna and Elsa in the flesh here very, very soon, but you get to look at their statues here before we go in. And here are the flickering lights that I was talking about. Really cool effect. I'm not surprised that Disney knows how to do cool effects, but there you go. Moving on, when you look over to the left, as soon as you walk in the door, you are gonna see the stage, and the stage is gonna play a very important role in the dinner service because there's gonna be singing, maybe a little bit of dancing, maybe a little bit of both. You're gonna get a show in between courses and even during the courses sometimes in this case, just like you did with the Marvel experience. So it's a combination, again, of fun and food. Here's a closer shot of the floor itself. Very well lit, it's a pretty big stage, and you'll see why, because they have multiple people up on stage. And 
And as we go on, after the singing and dancing, Olaf comes by to say hello to everyone. And who doesn't want that? Olaf wants to come say hello. It's a very friendly snowman. And then you also have some of the other characters that will drop by. My son loved this one. I don't know if anybody enjoyed dinner as much as Kayla did, and believe it or not, this is not her after having two glasses of wine and then singing. This is her just living her best Disney life. And then this is my son's best Disney life. Ben gets up and does the dancing in line all the way around the restaurant toward the end of the show. He had an absolute blast, and of course they end it with everyone getting up on stage. The food here was pretty good. It wasn't my favorite. I would say 1923 was probably my favorite out of the three, but overall the food again was very good, but this was our third night and we were already getting full. So we didn't quite eat as much at this one, but overall I enjoyed the food at all three of these restaurants. Moving on to some experiences that are not covered. This was an adults only experience because we went in here later on in the evening, but kids can come here earlier in the day. This is the Star Wars Lounge and I would recommend getting reservations to this to make sure that you can get in because seating is very limited. The look and feel in here is very interesting because it is a Star Wars lounge. However, it feels even more futuristic than some of the Star Wars locations that you see in the movies. You know, the locations in the movies look dirty and beat down, but not here. This looks like Star Wars went to a minimalist design and hired an interior designer. But nonetheless, it was a very cool look and feel. You've got this gigantic screen that will play a role here in just a minute, right behind the bartenders for everyone to see. Even the decorations on the bottles, the etching on the bottles is made to have a Star Wars theme. So you're not gonna find Woodford Reserve or Jim Beam or something like that. These are specifically made for this lounge. Now let's take a look at the menu and the cocktails, okay? They have several different cocktails here. Pretty reasonably priced considering, except for this one right here, and it is a cool $5,000 for one drink. Yikes. This is the screen I was talking about. You basically warp speed from planet to planet every few minutes. It goes to a different planet, so you're getting a different view behind the bartenders throughout the experience. This, let me just straight up tell you, this was the strongest drink I've ever had in my life. This was Woodford Reserve mixed with port wine. That's it. And it also came with some sparkly glitter stuff inside the glass. I have never had something so strong in all my life. It was the only cocktail I had there, but overall a very cool experience. All right, let's talk about the most underrated part of this entire ship, but it's one that a lot of people noticed, and I think they're gonna have to move the location of this at some point to make room for more people. This is Hook's Barbary. Now, why am I talking about a barber shop? because it has a bourbon bar that's one of the nicest bourbon bars I have ever seen. You can smell the bourbon and the smoked cocktails coming out of here all the way down the hallway and it attracted a crowd. They've got a lot of different flavorings. They even have bourbon perfume that they spray on some of the glasses and the cocktails here are ridiculous. This is entirely separate from the barbershop. You don't actually have to go to the barbershop to have a bourbon cocktail. It's completely separate. And in fact, once the barbershop shuts down, the bourbon bar is the only thing that's open. And you're going to want to go here because they have a lot of really premium bourbons and some that I had never even heard of before. And I'm from Kentucky. We know bourbon. I know bourbon. There were some that I'd never heard of before. So this is a Japanese old fashioned and that is rosemary that he is brushing across the glass. He's gonna put it in the glass and then smoke it as well. And this is the smell that you're gonna get all the way down the hallway. And it is a thing of beauty. Trust me, this old fashioned was one of the best that I've ever had in my entire life. This was my wife's. This was just what he called the traditional old fashioned, but even better because you've got the uh, sugar on top of the cherries. And of course, this one is gonna get smoked as well after it gets its bourbon perfume spray. Can't forget that. Now what place are you gonna to go to to get bourbon perfume spray? 
you're gonna go to Hook's Barbary, that's where. This cocktail was very good as well. Hook's Barbary is an extra cost, but I think it's well worth it. The old fashions were a little pricey, somewhere between $25 and $35 for the ones that we got, but let me tell you, you pay for quality and these were excellent. Kayla absolutely loved it. Like I said, they're gonna have to move the location of this because it's not gonna fit the amount of people necessary in order to get in. Do you need a reservation? No but you need to get there at a reasonable time before they close because it will back up. And just to show you that it is an actual barber shop, I showed you some of the barber tools. You can actually come in here and get treatments, massages as well, and we'll show you another place on the ship where you'll be able to get your haircut and get massages too. Moving on to another extra, these are Joyful Sweets. And I didn't actually have any of these, but I talked to some people on board and they absolutely raved about this. So they have all kinds of different ice creams available and if you have a sweet tooth this is located on deck 11 so it's right past all the free foods you can come here if you want to get your extra fix maybe something beyond those vanilla or chocolate swirl cones that you can get for free if you want something different this is a great place to go to because they've got a lot of variety here and in some of the desserts you'll see that they actually keep the theming of inside out another bar is the rose and you can see when you go in here, it has the rose under glass. Ooh, you get a good close-up photo there. But here, there wasn't anything particularly special about this bar, I didn't think anyway. I mean, it's a cool setting because you can look out and you've got a great view of the ocean. But overall, this looks like just every other bar that I went to. Nothing particularly special. They did have a class or two in here, but I don't think it's worth going out of your way to get in here. Now, one of the extra dining experiences that's not covered in the cost of the cruise is Palo Steakhouse. And we're gonna do a walk through here because it's a very nice steakhouse. How nice of a steakhouse is it? Well, they actually have racks for their water. Okay, so when they bring water out to you, it's got its own special rack to go with it. The seating in here looks more luxurious, a little bit more of a step up than what you're gonna find with the Avengers experience or the Frozen experience or even 1923, although that was a nicer setup it's still not anything compared to this as you've got the cheeses and you've got all the sausages and things hanging down as well. It was pretty cool. And continuing to roll along with something else that's not covered, this is another place for dinner and wine tastings. This is Enchant. Again, a really nice setup, very good views. I didn't eat in here personally, but you can see again, a themed setup for dinner with a great view. And the menu looked really good. I just didn't eat here, but I at least wanted you to see some footage of exactly what this looks like. Again, this was only a three night cruise, so we couldn't eat at every single place that was in here. Otherwise I would be completely stuffed. And trust me, I was already stuffed as it was with what we got to eat. All right, let's move on to the good stuff here. There are some good and there are some bad that I need to discuss here. We're gonna talk about the pools that are available for everyone. And there's a lot to discuss because frankly, there are a lot of pools and we'll get a close-up of those in just a second. So first of all, at the forward of the ship, you do have a movie screen if you wanna watch a movie. You can do that. There are plenty of chairs outside to be able to do that. And also down below the movie screen, you do have a small swimming pool. Now this swimming pool area, along with those handrails, are picked up and covered so they can do shows in the evening. However, it is open during the day if you want to use that particular pool. It's more of a kid's pool. Now moving from the forward, you can see all the seats there for watching movies, plenty of seats, at least for this cruise. I think it'll get a little bit more crowded when the full cruise does begin. Well, let's start, there are several different pools. Now this is a lot different because in previous Disney cruise ships, there's been larger pools located around the center area of the deck. This has a lot of smaller pools and the pools aren't very deep, all right? So it makes it a little bit safer and there are lifeguards everywhere. So this is the first pool and we're gonna go up the left side of this pool but something to keep in mind is that on the right side of this pool, it's gonna be a mirror image, okay? So we don't have to look at all these. On the left side, as you go up another set of steps here, it's more of a lounge pool where you can sit and watch movies. You can let water splash on you if you want to do that. It's more of a sitting and relaxing area. And this was mostly taken up with adults. Kids seem to gear more towards the pools that were just slightly deeper or the kids pool that was towards the front where the movie screens were located. Now this one on the left, is about four feet deep. So this one's a little bit deeper and Kayla really liked this one and our kids particularly liked this one as well just because it was a little bit deeper and it was hot. The sun was beating down on us so it was good to get in a little bit deeper water just so you could cool off a little bit and get your body fully submerged. 
All right, so we're up here, we're enjoying ourselves. we're watching a movie, we're in the pool, but if we go up these marked steps, we'll find our way to one of the most anticipated features of the entire ship, and that is the Aqua Mouse. And we're gonna get a good view of this because we're gonna give you a POV shot of this entire ride and let you see exactly what it looks like. Now, the wait times for this weren't terrible. For example, if it said 30 minutes of a wait, it was actually closer to about 15 or 20 minutes. So when you see the sign, don't think that it's gonna take that long in order to go through the ride. Now there are places up here where you can put your shoes as well if you need to store those. And there goes Sam and Ben, they're getting ready to go through the ride. And it's almost like it's on a small conveyor belt. So you can actually go through here and go through the slide. You can see coming down the slide here, you can get a view of this. And it's just a really cool experience. When you come out, you can actually float towards the end of the ride and you'll actually get put back on the conveyor belt again. And there were actually instances where my kids just stayed on the raft and got pulled up on the conveyor belt and they just kept riding and riding and riding. But instead of me talking about it the whole time, how about I just let you see exactly what it looks like in person here. Let's get a point of view of this whole ride. like there's TV screens on each side. Okay, I heard Mickey. Was that Mickey talking to us? He said, welcome to a winter wonderland. Oh, now we're going. So this is more like a coaster on a track. And on each side, there's So how cool is that? I mean, you get to watch some cartoons on your way up, you get a really fun slide, you get some thrills, and then if the line isn't very long, you can let this conveyor belt pull you up and you can continue on the ride, but most of the time the line was uh, pretty busy for this ride, so I wouldn't expect that all the time, but overall, very cool. We actually like this better than the Aqua Duck and some of the other rides on other ships. Now let's go to the forward. We are gonna go up these steps and walk behind the large movie screen. First of all, you'll run into another bar area. This is Wheezy's Freezies. So <laughs> this is a fun place. It's very kid themed, but they do have some adult drinks in there as well. And just getting an above shot here, you can see the splash zone. Now this is Toy Story themed, and there are a lot of chairs around here too. So if you're a parent and you've got your kids over here, you can either go in the splash zone with them or you can sit in one of the many chairs around the area and keep an eye on your children while they're in there. This was a lot of fun. The kids seemed to really enjoy this and the theming was pretty awesome to be honest with you overall in this entire back end. If you're a kid, you're absolutely gonna love this. I have a feeling this will probably be one of the more popular areas for kids on the entire ship. Now this is for ages six and under. And as you look over, you'll see 
another fountain area to relax and cool off a little bit. And then you have the Slidosaurus Rex, which is the yellow slide that you probably saw in some of the earlier portions of the video. We don't have a point of view uh, video of this, but the kids seem to enjoy it and the lines seem to be a little bit shorter than the aqua mouse as well. So overall, a very cool area for kids to go and play. Now this is really important. This is an area that I think could use a lot of improvement in all honesty. So you can see where we're at. I'm orienting ourselves here. You can see towards the forward of the ship, the movie screen. You can see the aqua mouse over there. On the level that we're standing at right now, you are going to find the adults area. Now the adults area, in my opinion, is where there's a big misstep on the part of Disney because this almost seems like an afterthought in my opinion, okay? So again, this is where we are. We've got the front of the ship where you saw the movie screens. And the first area that I have an issue with is the Whirlpool Spa area. There's a max of seven people only in the Whirlpool Spa. And when you have adults in there, it just gets full very quickly. If there's seven people in there, it's gonna be very crowded. So in my opinion, I would have liked to have seen at least more than one of these, or at least have a larger capacity. And you'll see here in just a second, I mean, this is the Whirlpool itself, but it's located away from the other adults only pools. And people are gonna be walking by on the deck back and forth, passing by this Whirlpool Spa. And to me, that's not very relaxing. So if adults want to get away a little bit, it's not gonna be in the Whirlpool Spa because you're right where everybody is gonna be walking back and forth. It's not secluded by any means. So I would have liked to have seen this be set up in a different place where it was more quiet and more secluded. And you'll see that as just an overall theme with this adults area. I was not impressed whatsoever. So as we go back to the aft of the ship into the adults area, you saw there were plenty of lounge chairs. That's not really the problem. The issue that I run into here is again, it just feels very tight and crowded. You have a couple of these small seating areas where you have water running in through the top and you can soak your feet and relax. And you also have an infinity edge pool that has a solid divider in the center and you'll see that in just a second. That solid divider makes each one of these pools feel really small, almost feels like a hot tub, only it's not hot, it's just a uh, pool temperature. So not a lot of room to maneuver overall in the water areas back here. And just in the time that I was here, the reason that I'm filming this here on the last day right before we got off the cruise ship is because it was so crowded back here during our time that I couldn't even show you exactly what this looks like. And keep in mind, when I was on here, the ship was just over half full. So when it's full, I can't imagine how busy this is gonna be here. I wouldn't come back here at all. I didn't really come back here for more than a few minutes, but I'll show you another pool in just a few minutes that a lot of people weren't even aware was on the ship. And I think it's a great place if you actually want a quiet place to relax. It doesn't seem like it's publicized very much, but it's a bigger pool and it's quieter. I'll show you that in just a minute. There is a bar area here with some TV, so that may add to the crowd a little bit. And when you add this into such a small area though, it just makes it feel really crowded. It's almost like Disney said, hey, uh, we need to throw an adults area back here. Can you throw in some small places for people to soak their feet and things? And I just don't think that's very good in my opinion. And also the hot tub being where it is, not a good fit. Now the cocktails were pretty good. These pop spritzes, were very good, basically a popsicle with different flavorings with some sort of mixer in the glass. These were very popular. In fact, they ran out at points uh, because they were running out of popsicles and had to stop and make some more. So again, I could imagine once the ship gets completely full, that could be a problem keeping these in stock. But the pop spritz, I would recommend. They are very refreshing. The Cove Cafe is also located in the adults only area. And this was a place my wife went to. I'm not a big coffee drinker myself but she really liked it and had positive things to say about this one. It does have a bar as well. Again, bars everywhere on the ship, but overall the adults only area, I just don't know about it in general. Now there is a little bit more of a quieter area if you walk up these steps. This is something you really have to look for and there weren't a lot of people up here, but if you go to the top of the steps, there are more seats available in a little bit more quiet space because the space at the bar the infinity pool and then also those lounge areas where you can dip your feet. It gets very loud because it's adults, right? Adults are louder than the kids. Now on deck 14, at the forward of the ship on the opposite side of the adults area was the quietest place on the ship when it comes to pools and it's not even close. 
This pool was very large. It was Chippendale's pool, and there was not a crowd here at all. In fact, I think this would be a great place for the adults area because the pool is larger, and you've got these wind screens up front too because again, you're at the forward of the ship. You're gonna be facing some wind. There are these, I guess it's plexiglass, windshields that keep it from being so breezy and you can sit up here and relax. I think this would be a much better place for the adults only area but again that is just my opinion. Uh, the pool's bigger, it's a quieter space, it's away from everything, it's not next to the Aqua Mouse or the movies or anything like that. Now let's talk about the shows. This is the Walt Disney Theater and we were able to attend two shows while we were here, Seize the Adventure, and then also we did a dress rehearsal of The Little Mermaid. Now, The Little Mermaid dress rehearsal did have its hiccups as there were some technical difficulties, but they did let us know that it was a dress rehearsal. We were supposed to watch Aladdin on the second night. However, they canceled the show because one of the major props of the show was not working at that particular time, so they had to cancel it all together. So the shows weren't really ready for prime time, which I was a little surprised by because they've had a long time to work on these. So I was surprised that they were still having technical issues with the shows. But again, this is probably something that will get worked out over time, I'm sure. I'm sure they're absolutely working on it. But it was a little bit disappointing to miss the Aladdin show and also experience some of the hiccups during the Little Mermaid dress rehearsal. It was actually previously announced as just a regular show, but they changed it to a dress rehearsal. One of the other shows, we were supposed to have a sell away show slash party. However, it got rained out, you can see here. But that doesn't stop the Disney staff from having fun with the kids. It was pouring rain, and they still had fun running around with the kids. And this is what you pay extra for, the extra care and the extra service for kids and making sure everybody's happy, even though there is torrential rain and the show just got canceled. They're out there having fun with the kids. That is the Disney experience in a nutshell. The pirate show was awesome. This happened on the second night of our cruise and it had a lot of sing-along music that a lot of the parents will probably remember. I'm talking about music from the 70s, the 80s, a lot of things that we would probably sing along to and you'll recognize a lot of these songs. The fireworks show it was ridiculous. I mean, it was so much fun. They shot fireworks from both the forward and the aft of the ship. So you had these fireworks going off everywhere. You had music playing in the background and just overall a really cool setup. The kids are absolutely gonna love this. I'm gonna shut up and let's experience just a few seconds of fireworks. Moving on to some really fun activities. So this is the Hero Zone. This is right near the entrance of the Marceline Market that we talked about a little bit earlier. And this is great for really kids of any age because you've got the basketball court, you've got a divider net in the center where people can kick soccer balls or play with a volleyball on one side. And then around the Hero Zone, you've got seating areas, you've got foosball here. I can't count how many games of foosball my kids played. One disappointing thing was that the air hockey table was not working and I didn't really have an anticipated date on exactly when this was going to be working again. I got the feeling that it was one of those dud tables that they're going to have to replace, but I can't verify that. They also had a shuffleboard table, but it was out of service as well, out of order. So it was unfortunate that those weren't available. And then on the other side there you have ping pong and you've got another foosball table if you want to use that. These seats, even though they look like plastic, they looked like the most uncomfortable chairs on planet Earth, but they're actually pretty soft. It's weird to sit down in one of them. It's very futuristic, but again, something that the kids will probably absolutely love. And here's a good example. Again, you can have people kicking soccer balls on one side and playing basketball on the other without interfering with each other. Kids can't be that far away from their electronics, and luckily near a lot of these seats, you will find a lot of plugins and outlets where if they wanted to charge their phone or iPads or whatever, they could do that. The Hero Challenge is something that I think every kid and a lot of adults would enjoy. It's Incredibles themed, and during a portion of time, they basically take over that half of the court that was showing people playing soccer, and also the basketball court, and they turn it into a big inflatable obstacle course where you can compete against each other and race your brothers, your sisters, or people you don't know. The kids spent hours in here doing this, and if you need to get away for just a minute and let your kids go play somewhere, let them come and do this course. Yeah. 
needless to say, my kids slept very well at night after they spent several hours playing in the Hero Zone. Now moving on to the Oceaneer Club, this was another area that the kids really enjoyed. They actually stayed here until midnight pretty much every night and the Oceaneers Club does close at midnight. My kids are eight years old and 11 years old. We gave them permission to check themselves in and out and I'll show you where they can check in and out if you wanna do that. With the theming, like I mentioned, everywhere else, it's no different than going to the Oceaneers Club. They're gonna get a great view and be entertained visually while they're walking to the Oceaneer Club. I wouldn't expect anything less at this point. The theming is really on point with Disney. They do a great job with this and they never let the kids feel like they're in some generic place. It's always a fun, visually appealing walk when they're going somewhere they're supposed to go. And as you walk in, we're gonna take a look at this slide here in just a second. So the kids can either enter through the main entrance of the Oceaneers Club, or they can enter in the level above and go down the slide if they want to do that. They'll be given a wristband, and it's really nice because it'll let you know through the Disney Cruise app if they've checked in or out of the Oceaneers Club. That's very convenient because if they're checking in or checking out, you can at least know where they're at on the ship if they have the ability to check in and out themselves. So you saw the Cheshire Cat there, you go up the steps, and you're gonna run into the entrance to the slide. The cover is on the slide right here just because the Oceaneers Club was closed at this time, but you'll see somebody at the desk here, and whenever your kids want to check in, they can scan their wristband, and they'll get checked in. Once they get verified, they will be able to go down the slide and they will enter into the Oceaneer Club. Bye-bye, everyone. All right, bye. Bye, of course when you go in you gotta wash your hands too. Very cool setup in my opinion. As you go down the hallway from the Oceaneer Club, you're also gonna run into the It's a Small World Nursery. And just like the Oceaneer Club, more incredible theming all the way throughout. Your kids are gonna know they're in the right place because it's themed appropriately for them to know, hey, this looks like it's for little kids. I must be in the right area. Very, very cheap if you need to have some childcare during this time way cheaper than you're gonna find with a babysitter in your hometown. So this is a great place if you need to drop them off. They'll be entertained, they'll be taken care of. And again, the Disney staff has been fantastic. I didn't have any personal experience with this, but the feedback that I've heard has been very positive for the nursery if you need a little bit of time away from your small little kiddos while you go do something else. Vibe is an area for people age 14 to 17 to hang out, it's exclusive for them, and there's all kinds of activities in here. Also, Edge is a place where my 11-year-old went. That's for ages 11 to 14. And they're able to go in and have their own space. The Hideaway is for ages 18 to 20, and they get their own area as well. They're not old enough to quite hang out at the bar or the cocktail areas, but they still need their own hangout. This is located right near the Hero Zone, so very conveniently located. Another cool experience, if your kids want to get all dolled up and look like princes or princesses or kings or queens, they can come to the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. This is the largest Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, say that three times fast, on a Disney cruise ship. And you'll see that in just a second. There's a ton of space in here. So little girls can come in and have their hair done, their makeup done, get their dresses, get their crowns, get their scepters, get everything. They get the royal treatment and the guys can do the same thing. They can come in and get their prince suits on if they want to do that. It's a really cool setup all the way down to the shoes. Just like Disney, no detail left out. They make sure they cover everything here. There are different prices available for different levels of service in the boutique. So you can kind of pick and choose whatever you want in that realm. You can get your crown, you can get your scepter, but you can also price it to whatever fits your personal budget. So take a look at that and they'll hand you the menu when you go in. You can see there's plenty of space for parents and family to come and sit while their little one is getting all put together in their royal regalia. And then at the end, you get to come take your picture, the royal picture, in front of the castle. So it's a full experience. It could be a fun family event for everyone, not just the people that are getting all dressed up. And just so you can see the prince outfits, you've got the prince outfit and you've also got boot covers. You don't actually get boots. You don't get shoes like the princess outfits. You get these boot covers that can go over any shoe. But long story short, you are gonna look like a prince. There are different cinemas as you go through as well that are showing different movies throughout the duration of the cruise. 
and on your way to the Neverland Cinema, you can see these wood carvings in the wall. These are really cool um, as you're going down through here. And you'll see these with the other theme cinema as well that we'll get to in just a second. Now, the Neverland Cinema, it was actually closed at the time I got this video footage, so don't tell anybody, seriously. But I decided to go in anyway because the door was open to the theater, so I decided to walk in. All right, so you can see the theming all the way inside. You've got the clouds. We're gonna open this door because heck, it's unlocked. And you guys deserve to see what this looks like. This is really, really cool. So this is a small theater, but the theming is really on point all the way down to the lights on the side of the theater. Now the lights on the side of the theater are gonna be Tinkerbell, right? These aren't your normal exit lights or something like that. These are Tinkerbell lights. And the seating is also themed on the back of the seat you're gonna see Peter Pan themed characters on the back of the seats. Even down to the carpet, you've got more characters and more theming in the carpet. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say it, but theming is spot on when it comes to this cruise ship. Moving on to another cinema, we have the Wonderland Cinema. And just like the Neverland Cinema, you've got the wood carvings here going down the hallway. This one's themed after Alice in Wonderland. And just like the Neverland Cinema, it is gonna show movies and shows uh, at different times during the entirety of the cruise. So we're gonna walk inside. This one again was not showing anything, so I just decided to walk in because you all deserve to see everything possible here. And again, just the extra work and the carving on the walls looks absolutely amazing. Let's see what's playing here. Thor, Love and Thunder, now playing only in theaters. And there were other movies that were showing. Uh, you can see here they were showing Lightyear, Doctor Strange, so there's movies galore if you want to take time and do that on the cruise. Since this was just a three night cruise, we didn't spend a lot of time in the cinema because we wanted to spend time exploring the ship and doing as many activities as we could. I love the theming going down the hallway of this particular cinema. This is really cool. Looks kind of freaky when you're walking through here, but it's very well themed. And just like the Neverland Cinema, you're gonna see the lights on the side are very unique. It's gonna be similar in size, even the ceiling is decorated, and it's in Alice in Wonderland decor. You've got Cheshire Cat lighting. How cool is that? That's a very nice touch. Those are probably even better than the Tinkerbell lights in the other theater, in my opinion. But on the back of each seat, you're gonna have themed cards, again, for Alice in Wonderland theming. Very cool setup in here, and I love the look and the feel of both of these cinemas. Luna is a very important place on the ship because they actually have a lot of events in the Luna Lounge. It's a two-story lounge. You can see we're here on the first level. They've got a screen there. They play kind of like uh, game show style games down here as well. You've got people that can set up in the upper level and we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But it's a really neat setup and this is really a hub for a lot of the activities that were going on, at least during the time of this cruise. Now they may move those somewhere else, but they utilize this space quite a bit and here's a view from that second level as well. And it's a cool setup for different events on the ship for sure. Nightingale's is a really cool lounge as well. This is right off the main lobby area and I've heard nothing but good things about Nightingale's. If you like to listen to some live music, you can go in and listen to somebody play piano, relax and have a cocktail and enjoy yourself. The Triton Lounge, uh, it was okay. It wasn't necessarily one of my favorite places but they did have some activities located in here. You can see that on the board but nothing special in the Triton Lounge, but just know that it's there. One really cool area that was pretty busy most of the time was the Bayou, and this is another place for live music in the evenings. The only negative to this one, I would say, is that right behind me where I'm filming is the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge, so you had lines of people trying to get into the Star Wars Lounge. It was also crowded in the Bayou, and it created a little bit of a log jam in the hallway, so I'm not sure what they're gonna be able to do about that, but the location is good. It's just unfortunate that it's also next to the Hyperspace Lounge. Keg and Compass was very unique. I actually like this place quite a bit. The theming, I asked about this actually, is just themed around Vikings. But if you look on the ceiling, you'll also see a lot of Disney characters on the ceiling along with that Viking theme. This seemed to be a pretty popular place with the folks that were on board. So I would imagine when the ship is full that this one will be pretty full because the cocktails were good. The atmosphere is really cool and it's a really unique feel. And there you can see some of the characters from Moana right on the ceiling in Keg and Compass. As promised, there are even more bars to stop at. This is the Enchanted Sword Cafe. 
So if you need to stop and get a cocktail, this is one of, I don't know how many bars that are on board, seriously, but you can stop and get a cocktail here if you wanna do that. Why not round out with one more bar? Keep in mind that these bars do cost extra. They're not part of your food package on board, but this is the Wishing Star Cafe, another bar to stop and get a cocktail if you need it. If you've taken a Disney cruise to the Bahamas before, you're probably familiar with Castaway Key. This is Disney's private island in the Bahamas, and it's actually a really nice setup because they include lunch as well, and there's also water slides. I recommend going to stop number two if you're riding the shuttle from the ship, which you can see there in the distance. Stop number two is where you will find the slides. That's also the closest place to the free barbecue area. All of those beach chairs that you just saw were about 100 feet away from this free barbecue area. You can see the drink station there and you still get your sanitizing cloths to wipe your hands off to make sure you're good and clean before you head in. And really, you can just go in and grab whatever you want to here. This is open from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And they have quite a bit of stuff in here as well, even for picky eaters like my kids. So you can start off here. Let's start off with the good stuff and look at the desserts. They have brownies, cookies, they've got cornbreads, bags of chips. And then on the other side, you'll find more of your traditional barbecue foods your barbecued chicken, corn on the cob, baked beans. You'll also find cheeseburgers, ribs, hot dogs. When you think about barbecue food, this is what you're gonna think of. Now, in my opinion, is this the best barbecue food on planet Earth? No, it is not by far, but when you're laying by the beach, it's hot outside and you need a good barbecue fix, this definitely hits the spot. You also have your pasta salads, your corn salads. And then on the other side of this, you'll also see some more healthy options where you'll have a fruit selection. So if you do want to eat healthy, you'll definitely have a chance to do it. And when it's hot outside, this fruit section comes in handy, especially the watermelon. Oh my goodness, I ate a ton of that. I did sample some of this for you just so I could have an idea of what it was like. Again, the food was pretty good. Is it the best barbecue in the world? No, but it's a good fix when it's hot outside. They also have an ice cream station. Now, unlike the cruise ship itself, this one is a self-serve ice cream station. And if I told you how many of these cones that I had while I was here, you would make fun of me, so I won't tell you. But long story short, it is nice to have that very close by. And from that second stop, it's about five minutes back to the cruise ship and you're back on. So I would recommend getting off the ship at Castaway Key. I know some people like to take advantage of being on the ship with the shorter lines for the slide and maybe less crowds at the pool, but I would recommend checking out Castaway Key. It's definitely worth it. Now let's take a look at probably one of the least visited places for me on the ship, Senses Fitness. This was actually a really nice fitness center. There were a lot of different options for working out here. I tried not to get close up on anybody while they were working out as to not make anybody uncomfortable, but I think you'll still get a really good feel for what kind of weights, what kind of workout equipment they have located here. They actually had a little bit of everything. So if you wanted to get a good workout, if you wanted to eat healthy on the ship, you can definitely do that. They even have these stepping blocks. I saw people jumping up and down on these to do something that looks like it would break me in half, but those are there as well. You've got your kettlebells, you've got your free weights. Again, a little bit of everything, like I said. So no matter what kind of workout routine you are used to, you'll probably find something here that you'll be able to use in terms of equipment or free weights or anything like that. The options are kind of limitless when it comes to the fitness options. And this wasn't very crowded while I was down here, which is usually the case on a cruise ship. Most people will find themselves at the food court area as opposed to the fitness center. But hey, maybe you wanna take advantage of your time on the ship while everybody else is laying around and eating cheeseburgers, you can come down and get your own workout. They also have a yoga area. There's a ton of yoga mats in here and the yoga balls, stuff like that. So if you're into that, you'll have some options to work out here as well. And then while you're doing your treadmill, you actually have a very good view out these giant portholes in the ship. So it'll look like you're running away, you're running off the ship. And I guess that's better than the alternative of these just facing the wall or something like that. But at least you have a really nice view here while you are in the fitness center. One room that was kind of odd to me was the cycling room. I mean, yes, they can say they have a cycling room, this thing is tiny, man. I don't know if I would feel comfortable in here taking a class. It's a little bit too tight of a fit for me. Now, after you've done your workout and you need a spa treatment to work out any soreness, they do have Senses Spa. And this includes both an indoor and an outdoor area. I spoke to the person at the front desk here and they did mention it's probably a good idea to go ahead and book your spa appointments as early as possible because they will fill up. They're anticipating a lot of use from this spa and apparently they have staffed accordingly, at least according to the staff here. So you'll have to try that out. I personally did not do a spa visit 
but it looks like a nice area. And let's take a look at the outside, because I thought this was kind of interesting. The outside area is located at the main forward of the ship. And what you're looking out there, if you can look all the way to the top of the screen, you'll see the ocean there. We're right at the front of the ship right here. And they've got some covered areas, some spas, some places to soak as part of the spa. So if you're interested in a spa service, you can do indoor. There are outdoor options as well. So you can certainly take a look at those. But I thought this was a really nice area and a really secluded area. There was hardly any people out here at the forward of the ship because I don't think a lot of people knew that they could walk around out there to actually take a look around into this open air spa space. So anyway, I would recommend at least checking that out if you're interested in a spa service. If you're looking for some other spa services or possibly just looking to have your hair done or your nails done, get a pedicure, or a manicure for that matter, you can stop at the Untangled Salon. This actually seemed to be a pretty popular place when I was walking through. I caught this right when they were opening, so it wasn't as crowded, but every time I walked by here, there was always someone in here getting some sort of treatment. The atmosphere is really nice, it's quiet, it's very peaceful, so if you did want to get your hair done, ladies, if you didn't want to go to the Barbary, <laughs> where we talked about uh, the bourbons earlier, you can certainly come over here and try out the Untangled Salon. It's a really good setup. They have all kinds of different spaces where you can have different treatments. So there's definitely a lot of space here to do different things, and they should be able to take care of a lot of people at one time on the ship. Now let's talk about merchandise. Okay, this is Mickey's main cell. Let me tell you this straight up, this place gets crowded at times. I mean, unbelievably crowded, especially after the evening shows and right after dinner. If you try to shop in here at that time, you'll face lines that are almost going out the door. And this is a big store and they're still out the door. And you can see here they have some inaugural sellings merchandise. And I would imagine that they'll keep this on board until they sell out of it, right? But there was a ton of this on there. Everybody was buying it because they were afraid that it was going to sell out. But trust me, they had more than enough to go around for everybody. So there's a lot of different merchandise here. You can certainly look at clothing. Of course, you can find your Mickey ears. There's stuff for kids. There's stuff for adults. There's hats there's toys, there's a little bit of everything in this particular store. You can think of this as kind of the general store for the entire cruise ship. And they had some Disney Wish specific shirts. So if you wanted to you know, get your claim that, hey, I've been on the Disney Wish and you wanna wear that loud and proud, you can certainly do that because they had a number of shirts and a number of items that were specifically branded with the Disney Wish branding. So I will say this, they do have a lot of variety. They have a lot of really cool shirts, so I can see why it was so crowded all the time. But let me tell you this, go there sometime in the middle of the day. Do not wait until the evening after a show or after dinner. You will thank me later. It's a big pain in the neck to go there at those times. It's just super crowded and they're not gonna sell out of everything. There's just too much stuff in this particular store. I don't see how they could possibly sell out of every item that you're interested in getting. Even for your wee little ones, there is some gear as well, including Mickey ears, shirts, and a lot of stuff in between. So whether it's for big kids or whether it's for the little kids, there is plenty of gear to go around. And if you can't afford the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique experience like we mentioned, hey, you can put on a Minnie Mouse dress if you wanna do that. Now I did pick up a magnet here. We'd put a magnet on the side of our refrigerator from every place that we visit. So we kind of have this big collage on our refrigerator of every place we visited. Now this store is awesome. This is Dory's Forget-Me-Nots. And this is located on deck 11 near all the food areas, near the entrance of the Hero Zone and Marceline Market. This is probably where I would go, okay? They have a lot of great screen printed shirts, a lot of stuff that's just geared towards the Disney Wish, just like some of the merchandise you saw in Mickey's main sale. However, it is not very crowded at all. At the time that we were here, it closed at 11 p.m., and there's usually like three or four people in here, all right, as opposed to Mickey's main sale, which is so crowded, it's at the door. In my opinion, I would spend more time here. We actually picked up some Aquamouse shirts for our kids, and they absolutely loved it. So I would recommend checking this out if you're not interested in fighting the crowds. And you can take a look at it on Deck 11 where all the free food is anyway. So you can go take a look at that while you're in between meals or something like that, or you're just trying to kill time while your kids 
kids are at the pool, you can just come in here and look without feeling like you're bumping into every single person that's on the ship. I picked up the hyperspace lounge shirt. Kayla picked up the orange shirt at the top that says wish. I guess that's orange, I don't know. Kayla probably says that's some kind of salmon color or something like that, I'm not sure. So don't fight the crowds, go to Dory's forget-me-nots. Moving back inside, there were a lot of different options for jewelry when you go inside. One being the Pandora collection, where you can get different charms for your Pandora bracelets. And they had all kinds of different options when it comes to the charms. This store was actually pretty big and offered some pretty decent prices. Of course, it is duty free when you are not pulled into the port. So if you had thought about getting some of this jewelry before, keep in mind it is duty free when they are pulled away from the port. So that may be a good time to pick some of these gifts up. This coach line seemed to be pretty popular in the store. It's got a lot of Disney branding on it. And probably the coolest one out of this set is gonna be the Mickey Mouse ears. Those look pretty cool in my opinion. If you're gonna get some Mickey Mouse ears, why not get these? They look pretty unique. And here's a look at the different charms. You can see there's a lot of different options if you wanted to start out your bracelet uh, with new charms or if you wanna add to your existing. They've got the Disney princesses, they've got the Marvel collection, the Mickey and Friends collection, just about any collection that you can think of when it comes to these charms. So if you wanted to do some shopping, again, it's duty free when you are not pulled into port. Moving on to the Three Wishes store. This is another store where you'll be able to find some watch options. Uh, some jewelry options as well, but these are going to be a little bit more high-end brands. This case was full at the beginning of the cruise. It looks like some of the slots are empty now, so maybe some of those have sold. They also have Cartier watches. So again, if you're a fan of the higher-end brands in these stores, then this ship is going to offer a lot for you. They do have a watch seminar, and I did ask what this was. They basically teach you the differences between all of these higher-end watches so you can make a more educated decision and probably, at the end of the day, spend a little bit more money. But at least they're trying to teach you something before you drop a ton of money on these particular watches and jewelry. So that's a good thing. Royal Regalia is interesting because it presents the first store on a Disney cruise that is partnered with a luxury leather brand in Gucci and some other brands as well, which I'll show you in just a second. So according to the staff, you won't find this on another cruise ship from Disney as of right now. They are exclusively doing this on the Disney Wish. They're probably doing it as a trial run to see how it goes. And who knows, it may end up on some of the other ships in the future. We'll just have to wait and see on that. And as you can see, you can find some other leather goods from high-end brands like Versace, among many others in this store. So if you want to pick up a purse, a backpack, or anything like that, there are actually quite a few options in here. And Kayla looked at these. She's pretty familiar with these um, kind of bags. And she said the pricing wasn't crazy on them. So you may want to take a look at these again because they're duty free. There's no taxes when you're pulled out of the port. So keep that in mind. It might be a way to save just a little bit of money. But let's be honest, if you're spending money on high end bags, are you really that concerned that they're duty free or not? Not really. It's just a really good excuse to pick one up if you were going to do it anyway. But hey, that's part of the fun. Moving on to the Enchanted Castle Jewels. Holy cow, did we have an experience in here. So you can find some really nice jewelry, some really high-end jewelry. In fact, Kayla tried on a five carat diamond and she looked at it, she said, wow, this is amazing, this looks great. I think I'll replace uh, my ring with this one. And we asked how much it was. It was $375,000. Uh, just a little bit more than we wanted to spend. Uh, I won't say how much, but just slightly more than we were interested in spending in this case. But they also have a lot more affordable options as well. That was just one that was in here. The jewelry looks great. So you can find an option in here that's probably gonna be more affordable, but don't get sticker shock when you see some of the prices in here because some of them are a little expensive. And Disney does not forget about your furry friends. Yes, there's even a service animal relief area outside on the deck and it is called Pluto's Corner. And check this out. This is genius. This is very Disney. A fire hydrant on a piece of AstroTurf with some privacy fencing around it. How nice is that? Disney doesn't forget anybody, including your furry friends. All right, so overall, I think the Disney Wish has a lot of potential. Were there some issues? Yes, let me run through those real quick. First, there were some unfinished surfaces. 
like I mentioned earlier, there were the scratches on the furniture. You can see here, this looks like it was part of a scavenger hunt that wasn't quite ready when we came here, but it looks like it has sensors on these little screens here. There's supposed to be a scavenger hunt, it just wasn't ready at this time. The shuffleboard and air hockey in the hero zone were down. This elevator situation with only elevators in two areas versus three is very frustrating because you do have to walk further to get to an elevator. So that is a little bit aggravating in my opinion. I really wish they had not done that and instead used three different areas for elevators. These elevator buttons drove me crazy. I had to push them three and four times to get them to work and that was all over the ship. I don't know why. Hopefully that kink gets worked out, but I heard multiple people talking about that. And here's a look inside one of the elevators, by the way. Uh, there were some wobbly tables in the buffet area. The show had technical difficulties. There was actually a kid that got stuck in the aqua mouse and it was down for a while. So maybe they need to work out some stuff on that. Uh, some of the food could have been a little bit better. I wish they would have had mini golf on board. The build a roller coaster section in the Oceaneer Club was down as well. So hopefully a lot of these kinks get worked out as time goes on. My assumption is they will. I don't think they're gonna leave all this stuff down all the time, but there are still kinks to get worked out. And the reason I bring that up is I want you to be aware of these if you've got any of these sailings coming up or if you're interested in booking one, you need to know what's working and what is not, all right? And there were some things that just weren't finished straight up, it wasn't done, okay? So hopefully that gets worked out over time. Overall, I would recommend this cruise because first of all, it's a Disney cruise. As I mentioned, the service goes above and beyond. The experience, especially for families, you're just not gonna get on any other cruise line or cruise ship. This is where it's at when you're looking at service and when you're traveling with kids, especially young kids, a lot of times it's about avoiding headaches or just surviving dinner. I already explained in the video how much they help you survive dinner by really interacting with your kids and taking their mind off the fact that they're waiting for food. It is a good thing and Disney does that better than anybody else. Now we're hopefully gonna do some more reviews of other Disney cruise ships and other cruise lines as well in the future. And again, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video. And if you're interested in more information on credit cards, points, miles, travel, money, finance, and also reviews of all of our travels, this is what we do on the channel. We would really appreciate all of your support and make sure you follow our channel. We've got a lot more stuff to come and I can't wait to see all of you uh, on future videos. Leave comments down below if you've gone on this cruise recently and let us know what you think. And here we are flying back into Lexington, Kentucky. I love the flight in, it's absolutely beautiful. And until the next time, we'll see you on the next episode. See you soon.